Okay, what I'd like to do today is to uh, start off, take a take a look at some of these really thin bifaces, these uh, casts up here, and uh, then discuss some strategies and techniques on uh, how to actually make a really, really super thin or an ultra thin biface. And uh, I guess we'll start off just kind of talking about what is a really thin biface. Here's some examples. This is a, uh, a Fulton turkey tail, and it's pretty darn thin. It's one of the first casts I got years ago. So if you turn it sideways, you can see it's very, very thin for the width. And there's a formula that we'll discuss here in a minute on, on how to figure out what that ratio is. This one here is the uh, Walnut Creek biface, also extremely thin for the wideness of it. And this is a cast of the, the famous uh, Sweetwater biface. It's actually so thin that it's it's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, I think there's a reason for that. I've been told that this cast and perhaps some of these other ones as well are actually a little bit thinner than, than the originals were. I may be wrong on that. I've never seen the originals, but I have seen pictures of them, and I've seen pictures of them where they're held sideways like that on the internet. You can see that uh, on Lithic Casting Lab, and uh, they appear to be a little bit thicker than what these casts are. So, so uh, when we're discussing uh, width to thickness ratio, I hate to get real technical here, but it's the only way to really measure things and quantify uh, how thin a, a point is. Take a pair of calipers like this, and we take the calipers and we measure the uh, the thickness, the greatest thickness anywhere along the point. That's the only fair way of doing it. Some people might take uh, the average thickness or the thickness at the middle of the point or the thinnest or whatever, but uh, the real way to challenge yourself is to pick the thickest point along the biface. Take that measurement, then take the measurement from edge to edge. So you open up your calipers and get that particular reading. And hang on. Okay, we'll uh, go over this again here. So you take the thickness, like on the Sweetwater biface, for example. It's got a maximum thickness at the thickest point of 5.5 millimeters, and the maximum width is 85 millimeters. And you just take this uh, maximum width and you divide it by the maximum thickness, 85 divided by 5.5 you end up with 15.5 to 1. So that's a number called the width to thickness ratio. And the nice part about that is that's a good comparison point. So you can compare that to other points, compare it to the points that you're making yourself. Uh, you know, it's a good way to, to kind of uh, stretch your skills, I guess, to try and meet these, uh, these particular goals. Walnut Creek, I come up with about 12.8 to 1. Turkey tail over here, you know, it's right about 10 to 1 roughly. And uh, I'd like to show you this particular magazine right here, this prehistoric American. This is uh, from last year's edition. Take a look inside. And all the uh, just really awesome Folsom points they've got in here. They've got a pretty good article on uh, these things called Folsom Ultra Thin Knives. And uh, these things are, are really, really thin. Some of them are better than 10 to 1. Uh, in here, sometimes they describe things that, that go like 20 to 1 or better, but in reality, I don't believe that's possible. I think uh, the limit is somewhere around 12 to 1, something like that. And I'll discuss that a little bit later. But uh, anyway, this is a good issue. You can buy uh, back copies of this. I think it was like 20 bucks or something. It's a great uh, magazine. And here's a couple of modern made, really thin bifaces. One on the left is one I did last year, and uh, this one here is right at 12 to 1 kind of a just kind of a round uh, it's pretty easy to make a round biface and get it thin out I'll, I'll admit to that this one here is one Ed Mosher did it's also around 12 to 1 it's just fantastic really and Ed did this all with uh, with antler he didn't use copper tools I admit that I'm using copper tools on mine and uh, when I use antler I have trouble getting beyond around 7 or 8 to 1 I'm working on it but uh, I need to I need to focus on that a little bit in order to get there so uh, here's some other ones. These are just just practice bifaces. Basically, I didn't finish any of them. I'm just sort of thinning them down. They're around 
eight to one, some are nine to one, right around in that area. Some of these, if you're dealing with Texas flints, if you get these concrete pockets in here like that, uh, that can pretty much put a halt on, uh, on any further thinning because, uh, you know, just, uh, it just makes it just about impossible to shoot flakes across that stuff and under it. So, anyway, these are all just for fun. And, uh, okay, now we'll take a look at some raw stones, uh, the starting point for, for making a really, really wide biface. First, you've got to have a stone that's fairly wide to begin with, and all of these are. You can choose a really, really thin flake like this. It's a good way to go, but sometimes uh, these flakes are so weak from where they bent and everything that uh, they'll encounter problems when you get down to the final stages and they'll snap. And some of these start off, they're, you know, they're almost 10 to 1 just to begin with. So uh, Another way to go, pick a tabular piece like this just super fine Texas flint right here. These are just fantastic, but uh, this stuff is kind of rare. Uh, the way I usually go is I just pick a big old chunk like this, and then I try and use a strategy for thinning these things where I can get down into the core of it where the best of it is, and uh, try and avoid the concrete pockets. If you got them, you got to start all over again. But uh, there's definitely a strategy involved in trying to get a, a really, really thin biface, and uh, we'll kind of go over that when we get started here on one of these things. Okay, I think we'll uh, start off with this rock right here, big old nodule of Pedernales. I don't know what the quality of this stuff's going to be like inside. I've got something right there and right over here. They almost look like some sort of little stem fossils or something, but uh, once we bust it open, see what we got. So the strategy here, we'll be able to create flat face over here, flat face over here. Once we have two flat faces, we'll try and bring them in together. We don't want to get convexity on this. We want to create flat faces and bring them in together. Now let's see what we got here. Looks like pretty fair stuff. Now we need to drive another full length flake over to here. Okay, it's a sort of uh, overshot flaking or kind of almost like a Clovis technology where they made these great big bifaces. That's sort of the same strategy we're going to be following right here. Now we need to remove some off of this edge over here. Take one off of there. I don't know if this fossil is going to get in the way or not. Okay. Again, we're trying to maximize our width, just throwing these flakes across. Uh, we don't want an overshot either where we remove part of the opposite edge. Uh, that's not no good. Got to get back in here somehow or other. Trying to create an edge over here so we can shoot some flakes back off on this other face. 